The following is a presentation of the Western Ontario Super Hockey League. Everybody, uh, welcome back. It's uh, Andrew Rogers here, the uh, host of the Western Ontario Super Hockey League podcast. This is episode number fourteen. It's uh, great to be back with you guys once again. Hey, yeah, it's me. A uh, couple weeks hiatus, but uh, I'm back and ready to go and ready to ramp up towards the start of the season. Uh, did you miss me? <laughs> no, forget it. Don't answer that. Um, it's great to be back with you guys once again. Obviously, and uh, yeah, we're really excited to 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 get the podcast back and going again. Um, you know, we, we got a great guest lined up today, uh, our, our Western Ontario Super Hockey League referee supervisor, Jim Carmen. We're going to introduce him here shortly. Um, of course, remember, guys, you ever uh, want, make sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel uh, to get all the latest updates of our podcast. Uh, that's where we can find them. They're all uploaded there. Uh, make sure also, guys, to check out all of our social media accounts. Uh, you can find us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Um, make sure to follow along. Uh, you can also check out the website that is www.woshl.com. Uh, you'll get all the latest news and information there, as well as uh, every team's link to uh, their their uh, websites and socials. So make sure to follow along everywhere you can, guys, because uh, there's a lot of exciting co uh, stuff coming. I know there's a lot of exciting stuff coming with this podcast over the next five, six weeks or so uh, as we ramp into October. So August is just jam-packed. We're going to continue to do our once-a-week podcast. They'll be available every Saturday morning at 10 a.m. So, guys, make sure to check out the podcast. Make sure to check out more of me. I don't know. We're all here for the players and the people involved. That's who it's all about. I'm just the guy that asks the questions. So, uh, like I say, further ado, uh, we're going to talk to – we're going to introduce the Western Ontario Super Hockey League referee supervisor, Jim Carmen. Jim has an outstanding resume. He was a linesman in the OHL from 1974 to 2002 – he has over 1,100 regular season games refereed, 293 playoff games, 18 Memorial Cup games, and six different Memorial Cups. He was a linesman in the 1992 France Olympic Winter Games. He was an OMHA official from 1969 to 1994, an OHA official from 1972 to 1980. He is currently working for the Burlington Eagles uh, referees uh, with them, and he was inducted in the Brantford Sports Hall of Fame in 2016. Please welcome Jim Carmen, WOSHL -O -O referee supervisor, right here on the Western Ontario Super Rock League podcast. Uh, we are pleased to be joined at this time by our guest on this week's edition of the Western Ontario Super Rock League podcast. This is episode number 14. Uh, we're with uh, the Western Ontario Super Rock League referee supervisor, Jim Carmen. Jim, great to have you on. Welcome to the podcast, and uh, thanks a lot for being here. Thank you. Um, Jim, uh, I mean, it's, it's, it's great to be able to finally talk with you. It's a big position that you're, uh, that you're coming into here. Um, can you just tell, uh, give us a little bit of an idea of your background in hockey? Well, I started when I was about 17 doing minor hockey and um, met all kinds of great veteran minor hockey officials who uh, I could lean on. And um, I guess when I was about 20, I got into the OHA and ran into another great referee. And uh, I lined for him for many years. And, um, and then when I was, I guess I was about 21, uh, I started doing major junior hockey. And at that time, the OHL was, was the OHA. It was major junior hockey and it was in the OHA. And... I ran into a couple of really good referees there and they helped me with my career. And it just, one thing just led to another. And, you know, all of a sudden you start getting playoffs and then uh, you get finals and then there's Memorial cup years and you get, you get chosen for them. And, you know, you get a couple all-star games under your belt and all, then you hit probably the ultimate goal as an amateur official and be able to do the Olympics. So I've been pretty lucky. Yeah, no, that, that, that's super cool. I mean, obviously, yeah, refereeing can take you all over the place in terms of, you know, where you can referee, what age group. Really, the sky's the limit, I, I feel, on that one. Um, yeah. Can, you, can yeah. you kind of take me through the process of how you got hooked up with Jamie and uh, becoming the referee supervisor? 
Well, I, I referee or I supervised in another league and, and um, I knew Bill Ryan. Uh, like I knew who he was and he knew who I was. And, and that was about it. And then I got a phone call last December saying that this league was going to form. And he asked me if I would uh, help them out. And uh, we just took it step by step. And then we, um, I got introduced to Jamie and uh, we chatted about a whole bunch of stuff. And uh, um, he, he really got my attention with his enthusiasm and his, and his drive to, to make this work. And, and some of the ideas that he has to, to make it work, uh, to me, is, is outside the box of what, what I've normally seen. Yeah, like I think you and I can both agree, and anyone who knows Jamie will know that anytime he talks about this league in particular, his enthusiasm is through the roof. It's just oh, yeah. one of those things that's just absolutely uh, contagious at the end of the day. I think that's what a lot of people really appreciate him, or uh, appreciate about him, rather. Um, oh, yeah, for sure, for sure. Yeah. Um, now, can you give us a little bit of an idea of what your role will be as the referee supervisor? Like, what does that entail? Well, uh, obviously, um, you got to recruit. I mean, you got to get a, put a staff together, and um, and then once we hit the ice, um, I think you know because we've got we've got got lots of guys with lots of experience, but you know, experience can has a big range to it. So, and then we've got a few young guys that that have come with us, so. For the older guys, uh, basically, you let them do what they want because their experience has got them to where they are. So you just kind of let them go. And then if they run into some kind of difficulty or there's a situation where you can help them handle it better, then you can give them some information and hopefully they'll run with it. Right. With the younger guys, <clears throat> um, you, got, you, you can take them right from the bottom and you can, you can start to, you can work on them uh, by um, encouraging them how important work ethic is every single night and then how to think the game and things to look for that can make you better that nobody else in the world will ever recognize that or know that you're doing it. But all of a sudden, it makes you look better in the eyes of of uh, coaches, managers, players, fans. So it, it's it's easier to get them. It's easier to mold them to keep them out of trouble at a young age because young referees uh, they have a tendency to to have to go through that process of being in trouble several nights a week, and they don't understand why. So. With my knowledge and my experience, I'm hoping that I can show these guys that there's other ways to handle situations that'll keep them out of trouble. Right, right. Um, yeah, no, that I, I, I hear what you're saying. Um, you, you know, it's interesting when I when I think about it. So, like, I've had a couple referees on a podcast that I've done before in the past with another league. Uh, Dave Middleton, he's a great friend of mine. Obviously, you probably know him pretty well, I would imagine. So, anyways, Um but Tim and his son uh, got to referee a game once, and they, they just spoke about how cool of an experience that was. Um, I would imagine, though, being a referee would be as hard as it is for me to be doing podcasts and social media. Um, you know, it's not something that someone could just come off the street and do without the proper molding beforehand. Would you agree with that statement? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, and it's, and it's really key. And, and young officials – they're, 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 they're fighting so many things. First, they're fighting being nervous. And, you know, when they're starting out, they're very nervous, of course, and that, that's understandable. And then, they're, then they have to, they're a kid dealing with adults, whether they're in the stands or they're behind the bench. Right. And it takes a very special kid to be able to um, – not so much dealing with the adults is, is tough enough, right. but being able to deal with that coach who's not only is his, his drive to win, right. but then he's got another ulterior motive. 
He's going to see if he can convince you to help him to win. So, you know, it, it, it's it's tough for the young guys to, to, to get over that. And it yeah. takes a while. It takes a while. Now, they need I, lots of support. Oh, I, I, could, I couldn't even imagine. Like, what is it? Uh, to be a referee, it's not something you're born with. It's not, it's not or sorry, sorry. Is it something you're born with or something you're made with? I, I don't know what the saying is there, but. No, I don't know either, but uh, it, 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 it's, it's, most of the kids who, who stick with it get by that by time. If they start out when they're 14, right. um, by the time they're 16 or 17 and they've really made the commitment to refereeing, by that time, they're beginning to get by that. Right. And, you know, they, they, they start to get a, an armor put around their body so that they can deflect all these bullets that are coming at them all the time. Sure. And they don't, it doesn't seem to bother them as much. <laughs> fair enough. Fair enough. Um, and we're talking with Jim Carmen, the Western Ontario Super Hockey Referee Supervisor here on the uh, WSHL podcast episode number 14. Um, do you have any referees lined up for year one uh, come October? Yeah, we do. Uh, we're just we're, we've just about got a full staff. Um, uh, we're, we need a couple. Of, we need a couple more linesmen, and we need a couple more referees. But if if we were to start tomorrow, we could definitely we could definitely operate. Okay. If, without without any problems. Right, right, right. And yeah, the guys. When I talked to the guys uh, when I was recruiting and I told them about the league and and um, how it was going to operate and so on and so forth, um, a lot of the guys were very excited. And you know, I when I spoke to them, I said, "Hey, I'll give you till I'll give you till the um, end of July to make up your mind whether you want to referee or not with us." And when I called them back, they jumped right in. And some of the guys on the first phone call said, I'm in. Right, right. Well, <clears throat> we're just waiting for the seasons to start now. <laughs> and this may seem like kind of a, an obvious one, but do you think, like, I mean, obviously, yes, there's enthusiasm with this league, no question about it. But do you think there's also a sense of, man, I'm just looking for something to do because the pandemic has hit me really hard? Yeah, I think that's got something to do with it. I mean, some of these guys have, some of these guys have been 18 months with without skating. Exactly. exactly. So you know, that's a season and a half, right. really. So yeah, I I think they're kind of anxious, and and you know, some of the some of these guys do other leagues, and they're and that's it's an unknown too. So they're right. you know they're trying to they're trying to leave all their avenues open. Yeah, no, I, I mean, I totally get that part. Um, you said you're still looking for more people. How can they get in touch with you, or who do they need to contact to, to apply? Well, if they go on the WOSHL website, there's an application there, and uh, fill out the application and email it directly to me, and uh, I'll contact you. Excellent, excellent. That's that's great. Uh, we'll make sure to throw that link up, and we'll make sure to make that information available, no question. Um, now, Jimmy, Jimmy and I were speaking a little bit about wanting to make sure or at least establish like something that's going to be really important and making sure that there's no division between referees and, and the, the, the league and the officials. Like, can you kind of, of elaborate on that a little bit as to what that means exactly or what you're trying to establish or hope to establish in year one? Well, I don't know if you need to get that. No, I'm not going to get it. Um, <laughs> That's awesome, man. Um, I think um, I think the, that that um, this part of the game is unusual. That because there's always been that untalked about division, but it's always been there. And um, it was it was pretty interesting when Jamie presented it to me that you know he wanted us to be part of the Blue Line Club and and um, those those kinds of things and you know that's pretty neat but it's cautionary let's say that there has there has to be a fine line Jim because honestly like any game can has a potential to get out of hand I think you know that. And if you start to mix, you know, what goes on on the ice with what goes on in the extracurricular after a game, 
that could get really, really uh, uh, questionable. Is that would that be accurate? Yeah, yeah. It, <laughs> see, part of the prop, part of the problem is that you know you got the fans up there, and you know we're not. They're rarely cheering for us. Well, of course. Of course. <laughs> and um, and then you you know as I pointed out, to Jamie. Part of the other problem is that you know you got the player that can't get over a call that was made. A hundred percent. And then the, the most dangerous one of all is when you have an unidentified uh, reporter in the press room or the Blue Line Club, and he calls a guy, and one of our guys repeats something that shouldn't be repeated. Of course. And then, and then, it, and then it becomes a problem. Well, but you know what? I'm, uh, I, I'm, when we have our meeting in, in August, I'm going to present it to the guys. I'll let it be their choice. Right, if, right. Because some guys just won't be comfortable with it anyway. They'll, and, you know, and other guys, will they've done their game and they want to get back on the road again. Maybe they've got a long distance to go or yes, whatever. Sure, of course. So, you know, I'll leave it entirely up to them. Um, the other encouraging thing that I found was that this league is not going to charge the referees. Okay. Whereas... Other leagues have a registration and all that kind of stuff, and right, right. you know, and you got to buy cresting and that. There's all, there's all always league expenses. With this league, there's no expenses to the referee. None. Right. He doesn't have to pay to register. Um, he uh, he gets a crest, and uh, he doesn't have to buy a, another sweater. Right. He can interchange his existing sweaters, like just take the crest off, interchange the crest, or if he's got extra sweaters or whatever. Right. But that, you know, that, that for me, when I refereed, when I had a, a situation like that, I'll tell you, you went into the league a lot more comfortable than knowing that they've already got some of my money and now I got to get it back. You know what I mean? Yeah, I get that. Um, you know, it, the, the really interesting thing that I'm going to be looking out for in this league um, it's amazing how many people know each other. They, they've either played with each other before or they played against them before. For example, I'm talking about players in the ice and I guess through extension coaches and, and management type all around. But there's a, I think there's going to be a mutual respect at the end of the day between everybody involved, at least so I hope. And I'm really hoping that that'll kind of trickle down to the referees. And I hope that there will be a mutual respect amongst the referees that are in charge of I guess, you know, policing the game and making sure that it's played properly, that everybody's respectful and that there's a level of integrity at the end of the day. Would you agree with that, Jim? Yeah. Um, and that's, and that'll be a message that I'll, <clears throat> I'll send, I'll send to the guys at our meeting. Um, one of the things I've learned over the years that often referees don't know who they referee for. Right. And, you know, and if you went around the room, uh, I would hazard a guess uh, out of 30 guys, you might have one or two guys that will have the right answer. And there is a right answer. Right. And, you know, and once they understand the right answer, and then they, then they, then they know how to, to, to stay out of trouble. And, you know, it, it just adds, it just adds to their portfolio coming in every night, doing a good job right. and walking out the door. And the coach says, who is that guy? And that's really what they're after as a referee. You want to get in the building, do your job, and they go, who? I don't know who that guy was. Right, right. But he did a great job. Yeah, like, I mean, that's, that's got to be I, – I couldn't imagine being a referee, honestly. Every time I think about it, it makes me cringe. No offense, but I think it would be just such a difficult job. And I, I, I can't – like, I, I know it goes without saying that it's really, really difficult to leave your personal emotion or opinion out of it. Like – you have to, you're there to do a job, but man, it's really easy to get tangled up in whatever personal that you got on it. I mean, that's got to be so difficult to check that at the door. I mean, can you speak a little bit to, be, you know, because you've been a referee, you know what that's like. How difficult is that to put those different, like put the personal aside? <laughs> in most cases, it's not hard at all. Okay, fair enough. It's, it's you know, you, 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 you get that culture, that player, um, that you just can't get along with. But that's no different than in life. Right. So, you know, you just have to, 
you, 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 you can't have it. I'm going to get them and get rid of them. You can't have that attitude or it'll, it'll never work for you. No. But you got to figure out a way. You got to figure out a way to how to deal with it because you've got, you, you've got each other for 60 minutes. That's right. And, uh, you know, uh, by and large, by and large, if the, if the referee, if the referee does, does his job and the key here, not only does he do his job, but he's got to come to every single game, every game that he does with the same kind of game. Like, Often we talk about consistency, but cons- yeah. but consistency isn't between you and I as officials. Like you're in here one night and call a whole bunch of stuff, and then I'm in the next night and I call a whole bunch of different stuff and let all the stuff that you called go. The key to refereeing is to be able to walk into every single rank, every single game, and call the same kind of penalties. Right, of course. And run the game the same way all the time. Yeah, is there going to be games where they're going to be tough to referee? You bet there is. No question. But you got to be consistent within yourself, so that when you walk into you walk into an arena, right. and the coach is standing there talking to his assistant or his general manager, yeah. and he says in a large voice as you're walking down the hallway, uh-huh. "Oh no, we got that Roger." <laughs> you don't want that. You don't want that, no. But on the other side of the coin, you know, you walk in the building and, and the, the same guys are talking again, and uh, the coach or the general manager says, hey, Andrew, good to see you. Glad we got you tonight. Right. Oh, boy, I got this nice fuzzy feeling already. I'm, a, I'm in a good spot and I haven't even done anything yet. Right, right, right. And, that, and, that, and that's so hard. Yeah, and it's so hard to get that across to the referees. So oh, hard. No, no question. But that that's I love that point about consistency because just because you call it one way, I can't call it a different way because then it's inconsistent from one game to another. I've got to call it the same way you would call it, the same way Jim would call it, the same way Joe would call it. It's got to be same all the way down the line in every game. Well, it, but you're not going to get that, Andrew, because you see the game differently than I do. Very true. So it, it's got to be it, – consistency has got to be within. It can't be shared. You're right. No, well, at least it can't be too smeared. I mean, like, you got to be within a line or a limit, you know. Like right. It's got to be somewhat close at the end of the day, I think. I always tell young referees, you know, it doesn't – it doesn't matter what you call, but it's got to be the same every time you're out. Right, right, right. So, and I relate it to baseball, and some of these guys play baseball, and I said, when you stand at the plate, if, the, if it's going to be a strike around your ankles or up over your head, as long as it's going to be in the same spot all night, you don't care because now you know where the strike zone is. 100%. And, and referees the same way. Of course. It's the same way. What you're going to let go, you're going to let go. And what you're going to call, you're going to call. Right. And then, like, and then, yeah, exactly. then the players can blend in and say, oh, okay, this is the way this is going to be. Right. And then the next night you come in <clears throat> and you do the same thing and they go, oh, yeah, we had this, we had the same situation last week with this guy, no problem. And it grow. So because now when – Let's say the Stratford coach is now talking to the Tilsonburg coach right. before the game started. Don't think for a second they ain't talking about us. Okay, well, they always are. Whether you're in the building or not, don't <laughs> think for a second. That's so right. it, becomes, <laughs> it becomes contagious. And, you know, and somebody like you, coaching, let's say you're coaching Tilsonburg, and you say, oh, I had that Jim Carmen the other night. He was absolutely awful. Wow, that can happen. Sure can. But – the coach of the coach of Stratford, yeah. you're good buddies with. Now I go to Stratford to go, oh, we got this Jim Carver and I heard all about him. Blah, 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 blah. And all he has to do is just trip once on a call or whatever, and the game's on. It's, it's going to well, happen. It's inevitable. Right? It will happen, but it, it's very important to get across to the referees that you got to be consistent with yourself. 100%. So that's, that's, and that's going to be part of my job as a supervisor to show and convince these guys 
that if you do this, you're going to be, you're going to stay on a good path. A hundred percent. You know what? I, I don't envy the position of being a referee. That's, that's for damn sure. Jim. That's, that's for damn sure. Um, can we, so, so in your career, you've refereed a, 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 a mid, like a hundred, like a, a lot of games. Let's just put it easily. But I've refereed a lot in a lot of different places. Do you recall as like a certain, like a, of the, all the moments that you've had, is there one that sticks out in particular that's a real good story to tell? Not in recent years because the game has changed so much. Like the fi- last five to ten years I was on the ice, the game was beginning to change to what it is today with lots of speed and skill and all that kind of stuff. But prior to the dark side of the game, back in the 80s, I mean, there was all kinds of situations. You know, and unfortunately, they often re- evolve around bench clearings. Of course. And, and they're always, that's always an experience to be involved in them, and I've been in a few of them. But um, I'll, I'll give you a couple. Okay. Two, and, and they were, one was at the Memorial Cup in Oshawa, and I think that was 1987. Okay. And it was a game between Ontario and Quebec, and the game wasn't going well, and they emptied the benches and the fans got on the ice. Oh, lovely. So that, you can find that on YouTube. <laughs> oh, it is on YouTube. Absolutely it is. Uh, and um, and a, another funny one, I guess, uh, and you have to understand who the guy is. I was doing a game in um, Hamilton. Okay. Yep. Steel City. Regular, regular season. And it was when Hamilton didn't have a very good team. And okay. uh, you could shoot a bomb off in, in the in, – <laughs> In the arena at Cops Coliseum and not hit anybody. What a beauty That's, of it. I've, I've been there. It's a beauty of It's an unbelievable arena. Yeah, it's a great rink. Yeah. What is it? First Ontario <laughs> Center now, right? Yeah. Is that what it's called? I think so. Anyway, I was with a referee uh, who had a very long name. In fact, it, it was uh, divided on the back of his shirt. Of course it was. <laughs> so, anyway, I was... He had, the referee had, I don't know what, and we never ever talked about it. I don't know whether he chose not to make the call or he didn't see the call, but it was a, it was a, um, a turnover okay. on, a, on a hook. Okay. So the play went down the other end. And in the meantime, Larry Maveny, who was the coach of Kingston, okay. when he, when the turnover happened, he jumped from behind the bench and stood on the riser. Oh, lovely. And he's calling me everything but a white man. We, 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 can't, we can't repeat those on this podcast. Yeah. That's right. They're, they're, they're like uh, Some of the words would have been fighting words on the street, if you know what I mean. I do. I got <laughs> So anyway, the play goes down the other end, and, and, and Larry's still yelling at me. He's, he, he's just all over me. Right. And the play goes down the other end, comes back down, and it's offside. So I blow the offside, and I skate to his bench. And I said to him, I said, Larry, you know I can't make that call. (laughs) Yeah, I know, he says, but I can't pronounce that guy's last name. (laughs) Anyway, you know, you get get stories like that. I mean, there's characters and, you know, one other story that involved the bench clearing, it is on YouTube also. Uh, Back in the day when Global was covering the game of the week. Yeah, yeah. We walked, it was a Saturday afternoon game, of course, and we walked into the arena, Hamilton Mountain Arena. Yep. And um, <clears throat> would that be the Dave Andrzejczyk Arena now? I think it yeah, should that's be. right. That's right. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We walked in there, and global media was standing at our door, asked who the referee was, and said to him, or us, because we all walked in together, right. we've allowed extra time today. We're expecting trouble. <laughs> awesome. That's a good indicator of the game that night. <laughs> well, yeah, it, it, it took it took a period and a half. Oh my god! And the two smallest guys on the ice fought. Of course. And then uh, the goaltender crossed the center line, and once they crossed the center line, oh yeah, no, that's game over. They all they all came, but that was on YouTube. But I've, go- seen, I've seen Slapshot. I know how it works. 
Yeah, um, <laughs> but that's the dark side of of today's game. I mean, you you, you just don't want to see those things. No, it's not. No, and I, I think the biggest thing too is that there's a lot of young people now watching the game. Young kids are uh, like kids of the of the people like the, the fathers playing on the ice or mothers, whichever. But right. You got to be careful because you can't put a product on the ice that's not visually appealing for young kids. Right. And you know what? And that's contagious too because uh, the way the NHL plays their game now and the OHL plays their game, um, all these all these kids, none of them know how – well, they, they don't fight and most of them don't know how to fight. And they don't right. want to fight. They just – they just want to come in and show off their skills and sh- score goals and it's a different, way, go. way different kind of game. Absolutely. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, what, uh, one final question I want to ask you, Jim, before I let you go here, you've been an unbelievable guest on this uh, podcast, which I really appreciate. So you, you've refereed in a ton of games for a ton of different leagues. Who's the biggest name you ever refereed in a game in your career? Whew. Well, <clears throat> In the OHL, I guess uh, there's there's so many. Um, you know, Ty Domi, uh, Eric Lindros. Right, right, right. Uh, you know, the, man. <laughs> and, you know there was, there's so many. And when I was at the Olympics, there was all kinds of guys there. Like there was uh, Mo Mantha and, um, um, and his nephew plays for Detroit, I think. And, and Anthony, yeah, he was just traded yeah. back. Well, sorry. He was traded to Washington, I want to say. Oh, was he? Yeah, yeah. He plays for Washington now, Anthony Mathis, yeah. Yeah, and um, um, Max Naslin played and Sean Hill and, right. and uh, Boris Salming played. and. Man, you've really seen it all, haven't you? Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's so cool, yeah. man. Yeah. I've had a great career, and I've been so lucky. And, you know, uh, it refereed – because you're out so many nights a week, like at the amateur level, because you're doing minor hockey and men's hockey and maybe the OHA and maybe some guys even do the OHA. Like you can be out seven nights every night right. throughout the winter. So it's really important that you um, have a great family and, and an unbelievably um, patient wife. <laughs> no. No question about it, that. It, it makes a difference. It makes a huge difference in how you go to a hockey game. Right. You, you know, you've got great family support. Oh, and then I was really lucky with the OHL because uh, they were so supportive of of officials. Uh, and I don't know what it's like now because I've been away from it for so long. But when I was there, uh, David Branch and, and Ken Bodnista were so supportive of the officials. and. It made it really, it made it really easy uh, to go on referee. And then, of course, you got to have great, you have to have great um, employers too, who are understandable because you're you're leaving work early and you're maybe coming into work late because you were in Sault Ste. Marie the night before and you got to get the first flight out and it doesn't land in Toronto till nine o'clock, so you end up coming to work at ten or ten thirty. You you know, it, it's a whole package when you. When you when you do that, so you, you you really have to be lucky. No doubt, that's awesome. I, I we'll leave it at that, Jim. Uh, we've been speaking with the Western Ontario Super Hockey referee, Super Brother Jim Carmen. Jim, it, like I say, absolute pleasure to speak with you today. Thank you very much for doing this podcast. We're excited for October for opening day and uh, yeah, to get this great. season underway. It's just been an absolute pleasure talking to you. Thanks for doing this. Okay, thanks, Andrew. This Western Ontario Super Hockey League podcast is brought to you by Joe's Diner. Come and enjoy Joe's all-day breakfast located at 155 Erie Street in Stratford. Call 519-272-9933. Uh, yes, once again, I want to thank our sponsor for the podcast, the Joe's Diner out of Stratford, Ontario at 155 Erie Street. Their food is delicious, guys. Check them out. Uh, I think they do uh, delivery and uh, and pick up only right now. Um, not sure if they're doing in-store dining or not, but uh, their food is excellent. Guys, make sure you check them out. I think they also do skip the dishes, so that's one option for you as well. Uh, I'd like to thank Jim Carmen, Western Ontario Super Rock, the uh, referee supervisor for coming on to the podcast today and sharing, uh, sharing our t- his time with us. I know he's a busy guy, so we appreciate having him on. 
I want to thank you guys, the viewer, for watching another episode of the Western Ontario Super Rock Week podcast. It's, uh, it's, this doesn't happen without you guys and uh, your continued viewership. And I'm hoping that uh, as we get closer and closer to the season, that viewership number will rise as more and more people get pumped. Um, you know, it's just going to be an unbelievable year, guys. You're number one for this Western Ontario Super Hockey League. Uh, we're very, very excited. Um, obviously, our teams are going to make up the, uh, the, the action on the ice, and we couldn't be more excited to see what they bring to the table. Um, I'm your host, Andrew Rogers. And uh, like I say, guys, thank you very much for watching once again. I hope you guys have a wonderful weekend as we ramp up. It's, uh, you know, we're coming uh, up to a long weekend. They never are long enough, are they? But uh, anyways, hope you guys enjoy the nice weather and, uh, you know, get out there and, and make the best of it. Make the most of every day and make it count. Uh, that's all for this episode of the Western Ontario Super Hockey League podcast. Till next time, we will see you then. Take care, everyone. Thank you.